And uh, now I'd like to officially welcome you all to uh, this session called the Innovative Educators Toolkit. Uh, my name is, uh, although it's down as Lanny Watkins, uh, my name's uh, actually Paul. So well, Paul is what my mother calls me and, and the doctors call me. Uh, Lanny's a, a name that I've been known as now for a number of years. And uh, I'm an educator from Wales. Uh, I'm a teacher at a school for three to 16 year olds in South Wales. We're a Microsoft Showcase School, and I'm very proud of that. Uh, I'm an ICT teacher and computing teacher who work primarily with the 11 to 16 year olds. Um, this year, I am the uh, MIE Fellow for Wales. So if you've heard of the MIE Expert Programme, the Fellow is the kind of next, next step up from that. And I have responsibility for uh, supporting the, uh, the MIE experts across Wales and uh, any teacher or school that kind of want to engage with uh, the Microsoft education ecosystem. Um, I'm also proud to be a Skype master teacher and a Flipgrid student voice ambassador. And uh, I, I'm really looking forward to today because I get to share with you something that's had uh, a significant impact on myself and my development as a teacher. And it started me off down a road that um, I never kind of dreamed it would have brought me to, to where I am and brought me into one of the most amazing communities um, of educators, global uh, educators that, um, that I'm so, so happy uh, to be part of. Um, just, to, just to start with, okay, we're, we're talking in this about professional development with a focus on the Micro Microsoft Educator Center, or MEC as it's affectionately uh, known. In the chat panel, if you are, um, uh, I asked a question earlier, if you are using MEC at the moment, or um, you're not using it, you've kind of dipped your toes in, or it's something that you absolutely love and uh, you've been using it for a while, just throw a comment in there so I've got an idea as to, um, where kind of people are at who've, uh, who've joined this uh, this session uh, today. So one of the most uh, precious things that we have is uh, time. And um, I don't know if, uh, if you've had it kind of promoted maybe where, uh, where you are in the world, but on um, YouTube, obviously because we've had this global pandemic and lots of places have closed where there is, you know, where there have been social gatherings and people would have gone for, for entertainment. Um, Theatres have closed. And on YouTube, uh, those of you who've heard of Andrew Lloyd Webber and the work um, that he does it with the, the shows, he's actually moved a number of the shows um, online and you're able to watch them on YouTube uh, every week. But uh, in one of the, the kind of the West End or the Broadway shows aspects uh, of Love, there is a, um, oh, sorry, in Rent, it's, it's in Rent, not aspects of in Rent, there is a song called Seasons of Love. And in the lyrics of that, it actually tells us that in a year, we have 525,600 minutes. That's the amount of time that we have uh, gifted to us every single year. And that time is precious, no matter how old you are, no matter what you do in life, that time is precious. If you are involved in business and you are working towards a deadline, every single moment counts. If you are a surgeon with a patient on the table, every single moment counts. If you are a child on the schoolyard at break time, every single moment counts. And as we go through this session today, I want us to think about how important time is and how we spend it and maybe challenge ourselves to think about, do we make the most of the time that we have? So even though this song tells us 525,600 minutes are gifted to us every year, assuming that we sleep for seven hours a night, if uh, we are fortunate enough to get that amount of time, then it's actually leaving us with 372,720 minutes 
of awake time, which when we think about it, that is massive. But how do we spend that time? Now, sometimes after a long day at work, we like to come home and we like to put our feet up in front of the television. And you may have a favourite TV programme that you uh, like to watch. And it may be a soap that is broadcast every night, or it may be a box set that's on demand that you like to dip into. But if you were to come home from work and have that rest and relaxation time, which everyone deserves, and you watched a 30 minute episode every night, what you were looking at is over the course of that year, you would have spent 7,800 minutes watching your favourite TV programme. That's 100, 130 hours, which actually equates over a year. Just watching that 30 minute programme every night, it's five and a half days of that year have gone just watching that TV programme. Now, not everyone likes TV. Some people like uh, to spend time out of the house and have got far, far more interests and hobbies. And what we saw is that actually after some of the Olympics and um, the cycling a number of years ago really kind of took off and people took it to the next level and decided that they wanted to start becoming triathletes. Um, I've got so much respect for, for these people. But what they were finding is that they'd have their job and then they would go off and they would train outside of their work. And for every single event that they um, competed in, the training they would have to do to get ready for that event um, required such dedication and hard work and determination and perseverance. And actually, they would find that they would be training on average about 10 hours a week. Now, training 10 hours a week over the course of the year they are looking at 31,200 minutes a year committed to developing and improving themselves within the sports that they are looking at. So you can see how people are really, really spending uh, their time there on developing themselves. Now, I don't know outside of the UK what the uh, teaching commitment is uh, across the world, but Speaking from the UK, I am uh, contracted to teach 195 days a year. So if I look at my job being seven and a half days, uh, seven and a half hours a day, five days a week, I'm looking at 87,750 minutes that I am contracted to do. But actually what we know is that teachers go far above and beyond that. And what we actually find is that uh, through a survey, teachers on average, we're doing around about 53 hours of work uh, a week, which grows that in a year to 124,020 minutes a year that teachers are working. Now, my wife is a nurse. And I was speaking to her about the way in which she has to approach professional development. And in nurses, they have to do something called revalidation in the UK, which means that every three years, they have to go through a process uh, which can uh, be looking at about 35 hours of training. They have to partake in 35 hours of training over three years. And that has to also include them reflecting on the work that they've done and the practices that they've done. That's 700 minutes a year of training or a day and a half every single year. And it plays a huge part in the role of a nurse because it deems whether they are competent and uh, fit to work as a nurse. So that is in place that these nurses have to go through is making sure that they're up to date with the latest procedures, the latest practices. Now, 
we have to acknowledge that teachers do not have patients' lives in their hands. But as teachers, we have our students' lives, in, uh, their futures in our hands. And we have to make sure that we are um, up to date, that we are informed, that uh, we are um, skilled up, upskilled and ready to help and support our pupils um, to be able to prepare them for the future that lies ahead of them. The sad thing is that there are many, many teachers who can't remember the last time that they went on a course that was relevant and inspiring and that they were still using the skill set and the knowledge that they learned then in the classroom uh, present time. And this is a problem because they need to. Now, there's different reasons why that may, uh, may be happening. Uh, sometimes it's down to finance and that schools are not able to budget for large numbers of staff going off and doing training. And now, as we've seen in the last few months, uh, the teachers' levels of digital competency and digital skills have been more required than ever before. But how do we get our staff to grow in confidence and to grow in skills and then support their pupils in that way? Well, quite simply, by using online tools such as the Mac. And that is why when we move forward in this session, we're going to see that it is a teacher's toolkit, but actually it's more like a Swiss army knife. There is so much to it that can help and support teachers. And in doing so, it's helping and supporting the school. And that return then follows down to the pupils. Now, the question I've got for you is, do you help educators to make sense of technology? Now, see, anybody in the school may be doing that. You may be a school leader. You may be in a position within your school, but it's your responsibility to help and support teachers with digital learning and developing digital skills. You may work uh, within a district where you are supporting teachers across multiple schools. You may be an IT admin person based within a school. Do you know what? You may just be a teacher who's passionate about technology, who gives their own time to help and support colleagues within their department, running lunchtime and after school, and even just having a drop in where they can help and support their teachers. And what we're actually doing is through Mac and one or two other little gems that I'm going to show you today, you are being equipped and given the tools to go and equip others. See, whenever you deliver training, it's always time consuming to actually go away and deliver the resources that you need to deliver good quality training to, the, to your colleagues, to your peers. But actually what we're gonna to find today is that in a lot of these cases, there's already amazing resources that have been produced that you can pick up literally out of the box and use them and uh, engage with your peers that way and help them as they grow and develop their digital uh, skills. And it's not anything to worry about. See, the first thing that we've got here is the educator support site. It's quite simply a website for teachers to go to and you've got a help guide that will take you through different apps where there'll be resources you can use, frequently asked questions and so on. There is um, the absolute crown jewel, uh, as far as I'm concerned, for online uh, professional development, which is the Microsoft Educator Centre, MEC, as, uh, as we call it, uh, that can be found at education.microsoft.com. Dot com, which is packed with over 360 hours of free online uh, self-paced professional development. 
much of the courses have been uh, written uh, alongside teachers and you will find that with the courses pedagogy is at the core of everything that is on there um, if it wasn't on there i would not be recommending it if it wasn't there i would not be using it myself and then the third thing that we've got are the teacher training packs what will enable you to go into a room with other teachers and deliver high quality training to them so let's dive in and have a look at these three tools that are available to you to help and support teachers that many teachers from across the world have really really benefited from so the education support site as i said is a library of self-help articles where educators can find quickly answers to common questions when we go into it there are tiles as you can see in the screenshot there that will address microsoft teams it'll address one office 365 each tile represents a microsoft tool it includes links to resources and videos it's a great way of being able to uh, quickly get help to teachers in your schools by signposting them to this if you are an it admin or you are involved in supporting teachers, then why not share this link with them and have it as their kind of first port of call? So if they have a problem or a question, it becomes the natural thing for them to actually go to this site first and um, check the information that's on there. And if they are unable to find their answer, they then turn feed to you. Because in doing that, it's going to free up your time to be able to help and support in other areas um, and also kind of lighten the workload uh, of, of those who are kind of in a more of a supportive role as well. So this is a really good site, uh, support.office.com slash education so that you can have a quick uh, one stop shop to look for information on troubleshooting and how to's uh, FAQs or things like that to help and support uh, the teachers first port of call. We then move on to education.microsoft.com, which is where um, the learning takes place, where the professional development takes place, where inspiration sits in, um, in what um, becomes your daily practice. Even last night, uh, I saw a teacher complete one of the courses that we find on Mac today that teacher was tweeting out some of the developments that they've done in um, really turning around a piece of work that a resource that she uses with her pupils based on what she'd learned just last night because it inspired her and she just was so enthusiastic she couldn't wait to kind of get started so what we find is with mech it's where we go and we make an investment. It is where you can go and you can get involved in um, developing areas that are personal to you. You may say, do you know what? Minecraft Education Edition is, um, uh, Minecraft Education Edition is where um, my weakness is. But I know I can go there and I can focus on that and I can develop my skills uh, that way. I can see a question has been asked. Can I ask uh, the type in the first website, please? And some people are sharing them there. I will put the links in there afterwards. Uh, so don't worry about that. You're not going to miss anything out. And I will be refreshing it at the end uh, as well. This development hub is where teachers can go and they can track their personal development. The question just came in, is there a way to get professional development credit when completing the courses or attending sessions? Yes, there is. Because when we look at these courses, every single course is given a value. There is a badge awarded that's attached to it on completion. Uh, there is a downloadable certificate for a lot of them, but there is also a training transcript that you can download uh, PDF format which will show all the courses that you completed in your own time 
and the amount of time you've spent on your own professional development, uh, which you can share with your school, you can put it into your own training record. That's what makes this tool so valuable as an individual, but also as a, as a school, as we kind of go through uh, and look at this, but kind of what does it, what does it actually look like? So, uh, I don't know if any of you are Flipgrid fans. I'm certainly uh, in love with Flipgrid and uh, still absolutely excited after this week's uh, Flipgrid Live when all the new updates uh, were announced. And Flipgrid have got a course, one of the courses that are on now that you can access and you can see it there in the top left hand corner on engaging and amplifying with Flipgrid. And it gives you the learning objectives there. It tells you the three points that those who are participants in the course are going to walk away with after having engaged with them. It tells you the duration that it should take. Now, uh, it may take shorter, but that is the duration that it takes. And then you can see the accomplishments. And you can see it's worth 500 points. And you can see that there is a badge there alongside it as well with a rocket and it says certified educator level one so actually the great thing about this course in particular is the fact that when you complete this course so you will go through watching videos uh, reading you a text there there is an activity where you actually record a flipgrid video yourself and in completion of that with a multiple choice quiz at the end which you have to achieve 80 percent if you don't get the 80 percent don't worry because you can reset the course and there is all of this is free there is no charge whatsoever for any of these courses um you will be awarded 500 pounds and you will be awarded a badge and that badge actually acknowledges you as a level one certified flipgrid educator that you have got to that level of understanding and you know how to navigate and find your way around it. Now, when you get to a thousand points, which is about two hours worth of, of training on the Mac, and remember I said there's over 360 hours of training on there, um, you will be recognized as a certified Microsoft Innovative Educator, which uh, is a, a wonderful recognition to have. It's showing a commitment to professional development. It is showing the investment that you've made um, in yourself and spending time in developing your knowledge and your skills. Um, and it builds a transcript and you can see underneath that course is a, a copy of a transcript. So you can see for all of the badges that are there, it's telling me um, how long it took when I completed it. And when I click on more details, it's telling me how much uh, each one is and you can see that it says view transcripts and I can click on view transcripts and it will uh, print it out as a PDF view that I can download uh, or print out, save it to my OneDrive and share it with others in the school. You'll also notice it says redeem code. So if any of you become trainers, there's one course on it that I'll be showing you in a moment. If you become a trainer, you are actually able to issue codes to people. So if you decide to deliver training on Sway, you can issue the people who attend with a code, which they can then redeem. So they don't have to do the course necessarily on Mac because they've gone through the training with you. And then they will get that training added to their transcript. So whether you were doing it on here, or in school as a group, it can still be recognised. Now, I did say to you, it's like a Swiss army knife. So there's far, far more content to Mac than just courses. There's also webinars and other events that are available on there that you are able to search for um, and watch them for free, watch them on demand. And there's also lesson resources. So uh, for example, Hacking STEM have got an entire library of resources, of lesson plans uh, that you are able to freely download and use within your classroom. You may be thinking, I've really been inspired by uh, one of the Hacking STEM courses that I've done. And now I've got to spend time building all these lesson resources. You don't have to. You've done a course and then you can go and you can go and download the lesson resources that have been uh, freely provided uh, to us. This is what makes it more than just a professional development page, but it's the it's the content that's in it that you're allowed to take away from you so that will help you 
put into practice what you have learnt on the course straight away into your lessons, because it's no good just um, learning without the doing. That's how kind of we remember and that's how we grow. We go on these courses, we learn so that we can uh, implement them in our teaching, implement them in our practice, introduce these things to our pupils. And and really, that's how they grow as well. And we innovate the things that we, uh, we learn from here and we take it to the next level. But they're also working with partners and some of these have been um, life changing because teachers have invested time in MEC. It's been life changing for the pupils. Why? Because they've partnered, partnered up with groups such as Made by Dyslexia, where there's two courses on there. Now, you may, you may say uh, we're a Microsoft district. You may say we're a Google district. Do you know what? Every single teacher has got a child or will come in contact with a child who has uh, requires additional support with their education. There are two amazing, amazing courses by made by dyslexia that help us as teachers to know and understand our pupils and how to support them better. And that's why it's so important that we go to these uh, sites and we learn about these things. There are other courses on how can I make my classroom inclusive? How can I make all the resources I produce accessible? And just by sitting down for an hour, you realise that what you can do quite simply is that every single child can engage with your lesson. That children who have been disengaged, maybe because they haven't been able to access some of the resources, because of um, low reading ages, because of dyslexia, because of audio impairments, are now able to access that work, be part of the class and actually engage and collaborate with their people, uh, with their fellow pupils. That is why it's so important to do these things. Partnered with NASA, resources on there also from the, from the BBC. And uh, during this time, um, in recent weeks, they've also announced a partnership with the WWF, the World Wildlife Fund, um, teaching how to teach children about the world. We've also got Skype in the classroom on there as well, um, helping you to know what you need to do to remove the walls from your classroom and to give your pupils those wonderful, rich global learning experiences uh, as well. So you can see the partnerships that are getting involved in it as well, making specialist content, uh, really taking things to the next level. And we really want to talk about impact. So you spend, remember we, remember we talked at the start about the amount of time that you spend with the minutes that you would spend, with the hours that you would spend doing different things. If you sat down to do an introduction to OneNote, you're looking at about 45 minutes to do that. If you've never used OneNote before, you can sit down and it will take you through explaining what OneNote is, 45 minutes. What you actually discover is that through using OneNote and through changing your practices, it's actually able to make you work more efficiently and more effectively as a teacher. Using OneNote can help a teacher recover 68% of lost time. One of the biggest all time uh, time wasters. 68% can be reclaimed. That equates to 8,580 minutes a year or 143 hours or 16 days that can be reclaimed back by understanding a product and how it can be used in the classroom from a 45 from investing 45 minutes so you can see straight away of the impact that mech uh, can have there now i mentioned the teacher training packs and some of you may already be involved in helping and supporting teachers. Uh, you may be um, 
have responsibility within your department that you are the technology lead or the digital lead. The teacher training packs actually allow you to download for free face-to-face -face training curricula so that the resources are there that help you to deliver a lesson to your peers. There could be a focus for an inset for a training day in school and you will have everything there that you need to facilitate face-to-face -face training and it is so comprehensive. Everything is in there that you will need. There are handouts, there is a presentation that you need, there may be a, there's a draft email that you can actually send to your peers beforehand telling them what to expect and telling them what they'll need. Graphic aids, yeah, there's also um, uh, participant resources as well, things for them to take away. So it's not just uh, resources for the leader, but also for the attendees as well. And they can cover topics from literacy development to deploying Office 365. So you will find the, uh, the teacher training packs, and I'll give you the link to that shortly where you can find those uh, as well. Um, aka.ms slash uh, I think it's teacher training packs. I think that's it. I'll double check. I definitely got it on one of the next uh, slides. So what about the impact? Let me share with you some ways in which MEC has impacted uh, teaching. Thank you very much for putting that, that link in uh, to the chat. I appreciate that. OK, so uh, speaking about the UK, we've had teachers who have discovered MEC. And from that, they've done the courses and they have been recognised as a certified MIE. That has introduced them to a community that has basically lit a spark in them that has started to become a fire. And it has got them so enthusiastic about what they're doing. The next step for them then is they want to go on to look at becoming an MIE expert someone who is taking that technology and not just using it but kind of shaping it a different way and using it to do innovative things within the classroom the way that they're engaging the pupils the way that they're getting their pupils excited about learning and using the technology and the wonderful things that it can do those teachers across the uk there's over 550 teachers um, that have now been recognised just in the UK as MIE experts. There are close, I think there's over 16,000 teachers just in the UK that have been recognised as certified MIEs. But it starts you off on a path. People who have become MIEs, within the first year or two, they realise that they want to continue to, to learn. They want to continue to grow. They have gone on to become MIE trainers, people with responsibility for uh, training their peers, going out to other schools in their locality and helping supporting them. They have gone on to become Skype master teachers. They have been introduced to Skype through people within this community. They have done the courses on MEC. They've started using it with their pupils and they've had ideas about how Skype can be used um, to really enhance and enrich teaching and learning. And they've gone on to join the Skype master teacher program. We have had teachers who've been introduced to um, Minecraft Education Edition, realizing it's not just a game but the wonderful uh, teaching um, experiences that it can bring, how it can be used across the curriculum, but also how it can be used to help and support pupil and teacher um, well-being and mindfulness. And they have gone on a path of building resources and sharing resources and become part of the global mentor team. And then we've had those who've been introduced to Flipgrid through the course, who've gone on to become student voice ambassadors. See, and, and what you find is that when a school has just one individual who starts off down that journey, they want to go and they want to inspire um, others. They want to go and inspire their colleagues. They want them to get involved and they want to show them the things that they can do in their subject areas. They want to introduce them to MEC and say, come and have a look at these courses. 
when I first discovered Mac, to my shame and embarrassment, I treated it very much like Gollum treats the ring in Lord of the Rings. I thought it was wonderful. I thought it was amazing, but I didn't share it with anyone. And I kept it to myself. Even when people came on to me and they could see that I was doing it, when my colleagues came on, they say, what's this? I would just say, oh, it's just some online training I'm doing. But when I introduced it to them, when I realised that I should be, the impact it had was huge. And this is what you see in other schools. In the north of England, in a place called Grimsby, we have a college where uh, one teacher um, discovered Mac and went away and invested time in the courses and started supporting teachers across a multi-campus uh, site that stretches quite a large geographic area. They now have 27 MA experts on the teaching staff and the support staff and over 280 certified MIEs. And the work that is going on there now with the use of uh, ed tech is just phenomenal. But it was all because one person invested time in Mac and went and shared it and went and got the staff onto the platform so that they were able to learn as well. We've then got Greenwood uh, Academies, uh, another group of schools that are all related together. And um, they discovered Mac and wanted all their staff to use it as their hub for digital learning and digital development and professional development. And it became their go-to place for learning how to do new things. And we can see there that, that through the work, they've become a training centre. Uh, they have, in the first year, 35 MIEs across the teaching staff. Uh, not just the teaching staff, okay? The head teachers or the principals, the teachers, the support assistants, and this is the one that I love the most, the janitor. The janitor in the school has been so um, inspired by what's going on. He's actually started doing courses and he's involved in running coding clubs in the school. So you can see the impact that it has, not just on teachers, but it can have on a whole school. And then we've also got there the picture of Victoria, who's the principal of one of the schools, and she set up a board where she records the teachers' achievements. So when teachers become trainers, when they become MIE experts, she records everything on a board, and it's kind of like their, their board of honour, where they recognise the teachers for what they are doing. The school that I am in um, is uh, it's about, we're in our fifth year at the moment, or, uh, just coming up to our fifth year. Uh, but before that, we were four separate schools. And uh, we wanted to have a little bit of fun in getting teachers engaging with the Microsoft Educator community. So rather than just saying, do this course, do this course, do this course, we wanted them to kind of go and search on it, find the courses that would really benefit them in, in their uh, role as a teacher. And we made it into a fantasy football league. So there'd be different points awarded for watching a video and then big points awarded for like uh, leading uh, a training session within a department or faculty for applying to become an MIE, for becoming an MIE trainer. And I was having teachers coming into the IT room every single lunchtime and just sitting there and doing courses. And uh, we had some fun. We actually made what was called the Mech Crun, which you can see there in the top in the middle. And uh, the little badges on it, uh, supposed to be little jewels, they were the, um, the badges that are available on Mech. And it came down to it right at the end, a huge head-to-head -head competition between one of the PE teachers and the head of foreign languages. And they were coming in and they were sitting there and they were doing the courses and they were asking loads of questions about it as well. And as you can see, uh, Scott, the PE teacher, uh, came out on top at the end of the academic year. We run this for a whole school year. And uh, I'll use the word reluctantly. Uh, Kate, who was the, the, uh, the head of languages, crowns him the MEC champion at the end of the year. But you know what? We made it fun. We made professional development fun. They didn't see it as a chore. And the impact was so, so evident from this. 
when we were merging the schools together, we decided to go down a route of one-to-one -one using surfaces. Now, how do we help to prepare staff and pupils for all these things? Here we have Kate down in the bottom right-hand corner preparing surfaces and actually she was involved in training the pupils on how to use them effectively in the classroom. Scott is there on the top with a group of pupils that he spent the day with doing exercises with them and getting them used to working on the cloud, taking everything that he'd learned from the courses on MEC and putting them into practice with these kids and getting them enthusiastic and excited about the year ahead and also training staff. And there's a picture of him preparing final moments before we had over 90 teachers come in to, for him to deliver training on using OneNote, taking all the knowledge that he had uh, learned from MEC that he put into practice in his classroom and then delivering it to the people, uh, to the teachers. Sometimes the training is far more effective when it is coming from a non-technical teacher to their peers. And then we have one of my favourite ones up in the top corner, you can see with Abby. And uh, in her school, they had a mech and cake day. Uh, it sounds absolutely amazing where the teachers would come to school, they would have a focus for that day uh, on mech. Different courses, it may be a learning path, which is a collection of courses, uh, all related, and they had cake. So um, they, they sat around doing the courses, working with each other, talking to each other about them and eating cake while they did it as well, which I absolutely love. And in the bottom one uh, is, uh, I love this picture, it's a group of people, they were actually working on a sway about the Beatles, but it was a teacher who discovered sway and how it could be used through doing a course on Mac. He taught his pupils how to use sway and how to use it effectively. And then he brought his pupils over to my class and his pupils taught my pupils how to use Sway. So you can see the kind of the impact that it's had there, that it's actually nurturing people leaders, that those pupils were taking over the lesson, they were showing others how to do it. And it was a wonderful, wonderful uh, experience. You may have seen this gentleman on some of the other getter schedules, uh, Adam Grocott. He is really, really driving this in his school and uh, has uh, the teachers are just so caught up in his enthusiasm that they are getting on Mac and they're working hard and embedding their learning into the um, uh, into their classroom practice and the things that they do. And there's some wonderful, wonderful work that's going on there. And we are seeing a huge change in Jersey in the direction of uh, digital learning and the way in which IT is being used in the classroom as a result of this. In uh, Scotland, we're also seeing teachers who are going from being kind of technophobes who said, I can't do computers to actually now lead in the way in our departments because their confidence levels have gone through the roof. They're embedding it in the teaching and learning. Their pupils are seeing a different side of their teachers. Their lessons are changing. Uh, pupils are, are becoming so enthusiastic about subjects and kind of uh, sparking that passion uh, in them uh, because of the impact they've seen on their teacher and the things that they, they are doing. And you can see the teachers either wearing their badges or their t-shirts uh, with pride. Um, Danesfield School have taken a really, really unique approach with how they have taken on professional development. So instead of having a digital lead within the school, they have a lead for Office 365. They have a lead for PowerPoint, uh, for Sway. They have a lead for Minecraft. They have a lead for Skype in a classroom who will focus on those areas of Mac and they will develop their skills and then they will lead staff training as a result of this. What impact has that had? Quite simply, the Danesville has gone from a failing school, a school that was on the verge of closing, to being recognised as one of the top schools in the UK. It is now what's called a demonstrator school for uh, the education uh, department of, Welsh, uh, of England, of the UK government, and they are a flagship and pointed out to say, this is how you do it. That is the impact that this school has had in changing their mindset on how um, MEC is used 
and how teachers are used as well in supporting and uh, driving digital skills. Just a quick way in which maybe you could start using this in your school, Microsoft Forms. I don't know if when you've used Forms, if you've ever had a look at the rank order question. The question where you will drag uh, the options into, into an order. Something that we find works really well is that rather than spending a long time analysing information, so if you sent out a whole school questionnaire and you said to them, what uh, skills, what digital skills do you want to develop this year? Rather than having to sit down and work out kind of where the priorities are, getting them to do it as a rank order will actually give you the results uh, within seconds, showing you where the priorities need to lie across the school so that it's saving time and also you can quickly direct those departments to the training and the resources uh, that they need. See, once again, effective uh, learning. How do we learn about this? By doing a course on forms uh, on the Mac. It's been mentioned about professional development credit. When you become a certified MIE, there is a certificate with your name on it. So why not set up a OneNote in your school where you are able to um, have all of the staff for the page and they can attach their certificates, they can attach their training record all to that so that if you are ever inspected as a school and someone comes in and says, can you tell me about uh, your commitment to digital learning and your staff development, you can show them that one note and the transcripts are all there and the certificates are all there, easy for them uh, to see as well. So use OneNote as a way of collating uh, all of the uh, results of your staff's professional development through Mac. Three things moving forward. What are you going to go away from here? Where are you going to go? If you go into the Mac and you go to the uh, learning paths, you will see one called the Student, Educate, Student Teacher Education Programme. Just because it says student there, don't be put off by that. There are 36 hours of uh, online courses there. From Mac, they've taken a selection of courses, looking at pedagogy, looking at digital learning, um, the different tools. And it is for any teacher, whether you are new to the job or whether you have been in the job for 30 years. Why not give this as a target at the start of the academic year to all staff? So that you say to staff this year, we're, we're all going to work through this. 36 hours. That time will fly because what you find is the moment staff start to use this, uh, use Mac, um, it, it can be addictive um, because they're just enjoying it and they're getting so much out of it. And um, when, it, when it's enjoyable, it doesn't feel like work. So set that as a um, as a target maybe for staff or if, if a member of staff is saying, I really want to kind of upskill, give that to them as their target. They don't need to go anywhere else. They can just go straight to the student teacher education program and everything is listed there and they just work through it. They don't need to do it in order. They can even dive in and out and, and take ones that they uh, like the looks of. You've got the MIE trainer academy. You do not need to be an MIE expert to become an MIE trainer. Do the MIE trainer academy course, which is 10 and a half hours online, and you are then eligible to work towards being uh, an MI, a recognised MIE trainer and MIE master trainer on, the, on training 100 people. Uh, that's 100 attendees. So if you've got 10 people who attend 10 courses and it can be the same 10 people, that's 100. Um, you can have somebody in your school recognised as an MIE trainer and the benefits that go with that as well, which you will find uh, online. It's worthwhile encouraging someone within the department or the, the people involved in digital lead within your school to kind of sit that and be recognised and have that support as well that they're able to um, that they're able to access. But then also we've got the Minecraft Education Edition uh, Teacher Academy, which can actually take them towards being recognised as a Minecraft certified educator. And there's 11 hours there where you realise Minecraft isn't a game and there is such rich depth to it. So, 
take those three, go away, introduce, send out an email this weekend saying, have a look at education.microsoft.com. Tell me what you think about it. Have a look for yourself, make a training plan. Why not have a look at downloading the uh, teacher training packs? The link is in the chat, aka aka.ms slash teacher training packs. Download one of those, have a look at it. See how it compares to maybe some of the resources that you've created and whether they can improve uh, what you've been using with your colleagues. All of these resources are free. You do not have to pay a thing for any of these. Freely available globally. And it will start you as an individual and it will start you as a school off down a path um, that you had no idea uh, the impact it was going to have. Teachers across the world have been changed as a result of discovering MEC. They have joined a community um, that they are that they love to be part of and they're proud to be part of. And um, it's growing. It is continuing to grow and to grow and to grow. I'm always here to help. This may just be a webinar, but please reach out to me. There's my contact details. You'll find me on Twitter. There's my email addresses uh, for work. But if you're going to take a screen grab, take a screen grab now. We've got the support office slash education where you can go. And that's like the stop shop where you've got all the questions and the troubleshooting guides. Mech and also the, the training packs. Get in touch with me, but also please remember to check out all the other webinars that are available to you. There's some wonderful, wonderful uh, educators and leaders that are involved in Geta and go to q.org slash uh, Microsoft or go to aka.ms slash Geta schedule and you will see all the wonderful sessions that they've got lined up or even go on Twitter and search for hashtag Geta and you will see speakers tweeting about their upcoming sessions. I hope you found it valuable uh, and I really, really appreciate you coming along today. Uh, don't be like Gollum with the ring, but go and share mech with your colleagues um, and start to invest time wisely because when you invest the time, it's going to have bigger impact than you could possibly imagine. Thank you ever so much uh, for joining me today. Enjoy your weekend and uh, stay safe.